Let's talk about Russell Wilson and the Steelers. When I look at the Steelers and Russell Wilson, this is a very good situation for both sides. They're getting him for dirt cheap because the Denver Broncos are going to pay out the salary for this upcoming season and for the next season as well. And if Russell Wilson doesn't work out, they can move on from him. But let's get into it. Can he find major success with the Steelers for his upcoming season and beyond this season? When I look at the Steelers, this is a team that has a lot of key pieces. You have very good running backs in terms of Najee Harris. He's had over 1,000 yards rushing every single season in his career. And Jalen Warren has been a very good running back as well. He's the explosive running back in that room. He's the most explosive running back with the Steelers. And Najee Harris is a sledgehammer back. They have a very good running back duo. You no longer have Deontay Johnson. You trade him to the Carolina Panthers for Dante Jackson. We'll see if he can be a very good cornerback. I don't love that move because Deontay Johnson was a consistent wide receiver. Early on in his career, yes, he had a lot of drop passes. But this kid was putting up very good numbers. Yes, he had a maturity problem. He'll take plays off. I understand that. And Coach T has said this in the past. They want volunteers. They don't want hostages. I understand that. But that man was in a bad situation. Even in the last couple of years underneath Big Ben, Big Ben wasn't the same quarterback. And it hurts for me to say that. Because he's arguably the best quarterback in Steelers history. Him or Terry Bradshaw depends on whichever you grew up in. For me, Big Ben's the best quarterback I've seen in a Steelers uniform. But the thing is with Big Ben, he struggled pushing the football deep down the field. You had a terrible offensive coordinator with Randy Fickner. You now have a guy in Russell Wilson that can get the football to guys like George Pickens. So I believe that Deontay Johnson would have really benefited from playing alongside this team. But I wish him nothing but the best of the Carolina Panthers. When you look at Russell Wilson, there is still a very good quarterback with him. 26 passing touchdowns to just eight interceptions with the Denver Broncos. He missed the last two weeks. But I will say this right here. A lot of people don't talk about this point enough. The Denver Broncos wanted him to waive his guaranteed money. And if he was to do that, he would still possibly be the starting quarterback with the Denver Broncos. I will also say this as well. He is smart by not waiving that guaranteed money. Because we've seen players in the past, they will go out there, they'll waive the guaranteed money, or they'll take a pay cut, and just a year later, the team would cut them. So Russell Wilson was smart by doing that. If he were to take that guaranteed money away, possibly the Denver Broncos would have kept him around. Now, him and Sean Payton were not on the best of terms as the season progressed. Sean Payton came out and said he was going to work around Russell Wilson. He's going to figure some things out that suited him the best. And he did that for the majority of the season. The Denver Broncos were a tough team in terms of not having the right talent around Russell Wilson. Jerry Judy was a solid wide receiver. He was not the true number one that they were looking for. Cortland Sutton, very good wide receiver. He's a true number one. But Jerry Judy had a lot of major drops. The run game was inconsistent at times. The offensive line protection was better. But the system was weird for Russell Wilson because he is not your traditional pocket passer. Yes, he can operate from inside the pocket, but he is known for lateral movement. When you let him move from sideline to sideline, you let him throw off of play action bootlegs. That's when he's at his best. Sean Payton did that, but he did not do it to the highest degree like how Pete Carroll and the Seattle Seahawks did many years ago. And the Denver Broncos did none of that in that first year underneath Nathaniel Hackett. I believe that Russell Wilson was put into a horrible situation with the Denver Broncos. The offensive line protection was leaky, especially the first season. He was tied with being the most sacked quarterback in the NFL with Justin Fields. A lot of it is because of this as well. He holds on to the football for too long. You can't do that in this division. And you cannot do that with the schedule that the Steelers have. Now, a lot of people don't talk about this either. Even though he does hold on to the football for too long, he did get the football out quicker underneath Sean Payton. You have a brand new offensive coordinator with the Steelers and Arthur Smith. You hope that he can come in and he can be better than Randy Fickner. You hope that he can come in and be better than Matt Canada. Matt Canada is the worst offensive coordinator I have seen in Steelers history. He's even worse than Randy Fickner. But when I look at the pieces that the Steelers have, it's pretty much tailored for Russell Wilson to come in here and have success. And if he doesn't, he no longer deserves to be a starter in the NFL. Arthur Smith was a terrible head coach with the Atlanta Falcons. Terrible offensive coordinator as well with the Falcons. But we have to realize something here. He's mainly just an offensive coordinator with the Steelers, like how he was at the Tennessee Titans. That's when he's seen his most success in the NFL. He helped the Tennessee Titans have one of the best offenses that they they have ever had in franchise history. 
with guys like Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown. Now, the flip side to that is this. Derrick Henry was a monster that, that season. He was the best running back in the NFL. A.J. Brown was one of the best wide receivers and still is one of the best wide receivers. But there's some similarities here. Najee Harris is not Derrick Henry. I'm not saying that. But he's similar to running style. Straight up the gut, bruiser back. George Pickens, he's no A.J. Brown, but he's a very good wide receiver. You look at what George Pickens was able to do this season. He dealt with terrible quarterback play from guys like Mitch Trubisky, Kenny Pickett, and from Mason Rudolph. Mason Rudolph was solid those last three games, by the way. But George Pickens had 63 catches for 1,140 receiving yards, five receiving touchdowns. He averaged 18 yards a catch. How will he look with roll coverage coming his way? But well, we pretty much got our answer this season. George Pickens was the number one wide receiver for a majority of the season because Deontay Johnson missed time dealing with a hamstring injury. A lot of insiders forget about that. He injured his hamstring against the San Francisco 49ers. So against road coverage, he looked very good. He would get open. Kenny Pickett just wouldn't see him. He would not get him the football. Mason Rudolph got him the football. And the one thing that I'm very happy to see that the Steelers are going to be able to put into their playbook, into their offense, Russell Wilson is not the same quarterback that he was in terms of speed and athleticism, but he can still run with the football. Big Ben wasn't the same athletic quarterback later on in his career. Kenny Pickett did not have the athleticism that you're looking for. Mr. Trubisky did have the escapability, but he did not have the arm in the decision making. Russell Wilson's not going to turn the football over. You can now run read options with Russell Wilson. And you can do some option plays with him and Jalen Warren and some RPOs with George Pickens coming across the middle of the field as well. So you just have to be very creative with this. And I expect for Arthur Smith to do that. It's going to be an old school type of offense because Mike Tumlin loves to run the football. But as long as you're able to go out there and you're just able to lighten the box up, get George Pickens in one on one situations. Get guys like Roman Wilson into the ball game. And the same with Pat Firemute. They have good weapons here with the Steelers. And I look at Pat Firemute. He should be the second receiving option alongside George Pickens. And I understand he's not a wide receiver. He's a tight end. Look at what he was able to do his rookie season with Big Ben. That just may be a one-year outlier. But Big Ben would go out there and give this kid opportunities. Especially up the middle of the field and up the seams. Now Russell Wilson has never been a quarterback to look across the middle of the field. Until his last year with Sean Payton. I'm not expecting for him to change. I'm not expecting for him to come out here. And just start throwing deep down the middle of the field. He is not known to do that. But on the perimeter. He's going to open up things for guys like Pat Firemute. And George Pickens. Towards the seams. Russell Wilson would throw the football there. That's what Pat Firemute likes to operate at. You can have a system to where he works underneath. Like how he did with Sean Payton. You just have to be more patient with him. And his decision making. But Russell Wilson should get the ability to go out there and work on third down. This is a Steelers team that went out there. They drafted a brand new tackle and Troy in the first round. Fatanu has very good potential. Broderick Jones shows signs of brilliance at the right tackle position. They moved him around. He's better at right tackle than he was at left tackle. You have James Daniels has only allowed one sack in the last two seasons and is a very good run blocker as well. You have a brand new center and Zach Frazier and you moved on from Mason Cole. He was one of the worst centers in the NFL. And you have Isaac at the left guard position as well. I will say this. You have a young offensive line. Give them time. And that's what worries me a lot. Because Russell Wilson would not go out there and get rid of the football quick enough at times to where it just makes you want to pull your hair out like how it was with Sean Payton. But you go out there. If he can just say, hey, you know what? This guy is open. I'm going to deliver the football here. Russell Wilson has to understand he just can't go out there and just try to run around and improvise and point guys deep down the field. That part of his game is not the same. But in terms of lateral movement and working off the play-action bootleg, he's going to be st still a threat. And we saw that with Sean Payton. Let's not act like that Russell Wilson was a terrible quarterback this season and he's completely just washed up. A lot of those plays he can't make anymore. But the Steelers, they don't need a top five to top ten quarterback. That would be great for his organization. But they just need the guy that's going to go out there, manage the game, not turn the football over, and put the wide receivers in the best situation as possible, and play through your defense with guys like T.J. Watt and Alice Highsmith, and now Patrick Queen and Peyton Wilson and Mika Fitzpatrick and Joy Porter Jr. You have a very good defense. Part of the reason to why the Steelers were able to win the games they won last season, their defense was able to come away with takeaways, like how they did against the Cleveland Browns, fumble for sixes, 
pick sixes. T.J. Watt being the best pass rusher in the NFL. Yes, over Miles Garrett and over Micah Parsons as well. The best defensive player in the NFL. And Mika Fitzpatrick missed some games. Dealing with a hand injury. And a knee injury as well. So their defense, I don't have questions about it. And I do believe that Russell Wilson will be solid enough to get them over the hump. Russell Wilson has never went out there and had a turnover problem. Yes, he has some fumbles, but he'll go out there and recover those fumbles. So we don't have to worry about that. He only had 13 interceptions in 2020. That's the most interceptions that he has ever had in a season in his career. And he had 40 passing touchdowns in that same season. And he had 4,212 passing yards. This last season with the Denver Broncos, he had 20 passing touchdowns to just one interception in the red zone. And his red zone completion percentage was one of the best red zone completion percentage percentages in the NFL. At 62.3%, that was the sixth best in the NFL. His, pr his pressure completion percentage was 63.6%. That was the third best in the NFL. Play action percentage was average, 50.4%. But a lot of that is just working underneath because Sean Payton really didn't trust him. I'm not saying go out there and let Russell Wilson cook. I don't want to see that. He shouldn't throw the football over 30 times in the game. 20 to 25 times a game is a sweet spot. And get him out on the run as well to deliver the football to guys like George Pickens and Roman Wilson and Pat Firemute. I am worried about their wide receiving position. But at the same time, this organization, for decades now, they have always fine. They always find diamonds in the rough. They moved on from Deontay Johnson. I'm worried about that. But if Roman Wilson can come in and he can be their replacement, I'm no longer worried about it. This is the same organization that drafted guys like Juju Smith-Schuster, who put up big numbers. They drafted Chase Claypool, who had a good rookie season. They drafted Antonio Brown, one of the best wide receivers that we have ever seen in a Steelers uniform in the last decade plus. They had Martavius Bryant. He was good as well. So I'm not worried about the development of the wide receivers over time. I'm worried about them on day one because of how tough this schedule is. But if you ask me right now, do I believe that the Steelers can go out there and make the NFL playoffs? Sure. Can they win a playoff game or two? I don't know about all that. I'm not going to come on here and say that because they haven't won a playoff game since 2016. And Coach Tomlin just got a contract extension for the next three years. So he's going to be here. If it would... To be a season that the Steelers would go under 500, this would be the season because of how tough their schedule is. But at the same time, they play every single team in this division tough. They went 5-1 and one last season in this division. And the one game they lost was against the Cleveland Browns. And they only had one good offensive play in that game. And that came from Jalen Warren getting a 50-yard rushing touchdown. You have a better quarterback now with Russell Wilson. You have solid playmakers across the board. It's going to come down to Arthur Smith. Can he work these things out? And as an offensive coordinator in the past, he's done a very good job. And I'm not saying that he's just going to come over here and he's just going to be this great offensive mind. But we're going to see what the Steelers can do for this upcoming season. I have a lot more faith in Russell Wilson than I did in Kenny Pickett and in Mr. Trubisky as well. Because of the veteranship. They're still a very good quarterback here. I don't want to see the Steelers get into any shootouts either. But if they can go out there and they can just score 21 to 25 points a game, you're going to be solid. But let me know in the comment section below, can Russell Wilson find true success with the Steelers? If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Most importantly, when each and every last one of you guys stay safe, stay positive. Thanks for watching the video, guys. God bless. Peace.